2016 NCAA Men's College Cup here at BBBA Compass Stadium in Houston, Texas, and uh, continuing our pre-tournament press conferences with our fourth and final team of the day. You guys from Stanford University, uh, we're joined by head coach Jeremy Gunn and student athletes Tomas Hilliard Arce and Drew Skendridge. Uh, we'll again open up with a, an opening statement from coach, and then we'll turn it over to questions from you guys. Again, if you would please just introduce yourself with your name and affiliation so they know who they're speaking with. So with that, uh, coach, first of all, congratulations on a great season so far. Welcome to Houston. Good luck tomorrow. And uh, any comments from you guys, or from you to start off? We're just, just excited to be here. We've had a, an incredible season. Um, you know, we have strengths of schedule and all those types of statistics, but. You know, this group had to face the toughest schedule in the country because every team we played was excited to play against us. And, um, you know, we, we had some great players move on after, after last year and, and maybe uh, the outside world <coughs> wanted to uh, uh, ride us off from that. And I think um, all testament to the players We've had a tremendous group this year and having played well at the beginning of the season and not quite got the results we wanted, we. We kept our belief and worked hard through the year, and uh, you know, we're still standing, and we're excited to play this weekend. Thank you, Coach. We'll go ahead and open up the questions from you guys. Just raise your hand. We'll get the microphone to you. Start off in the back with Jerry. Jerry Lee Woodley Jr., the College Sports Report. Coach, let's talk about the standard that's. Stanford sets for itself when they start the season and where they should be and supposed to be at the end of the season? Well, what was really impressive to me is, you know, sometimes you get a bit of a hangover from doing fairly well. And um, come January when we started training, I was just so excited because the, the team were committed. They, they were all about working hard. And you get asked all the questions on how do you compare this, how do you do that after that. And that, that never comes into it for us. The standards we have is that every player wants to be as good as they can be, period. And so every day we train, they're setting high standards. And I think that just carries on to the field, the, the way we train, the way we compete. Um, I think the players really self-manage, setting those high standards and always pushing themselves forward. And certainly the, the campus that we live on, um, if ever you think you're doing something special, then there's a there's a hundred people doing ten times better than you. And so I think the guys always stay grounded and they just know from game to game, week to week, that we, we can never guarantee results, we can never guarantee outcomes, but we can guarantee the work we put in, how hard we prepare, and the fact that we're proud to represent a great university. Recording, uh, Chris. For, for the players, what Obviously, when Jordan is there last year, you guys know how good he's probably going to be. But as you watched his rookie season with Seattle and breaking into the national team, what are you guys' thoughts of that from from afar? Um, I didn't think us as players had any doubt that he could be special in the MLS or on the national team scale. I think uh, we're super supportive and, and we're watching him in play in, in both the playoffs and obviously when he gets called in. And we're super excited for him and as well. Yeah, I did agree with Tomas. I mean, we never doubted him for a second. We always knew um, his abilities and how, how well he goes after everything trade he's working on every day. Um, so I think it's really good to see him uh, succeeding uh, so well. Um, he's, I'd say he's his, big credit, he's his biggest credit. Um, so it's really, really good to see him happy and enjoy himself out there. Christy. Christy Rethan from the Associated Press. Uh, for the players, um, can either of y'all discuss, like, what, like you were talking about having the target on your back all year after winning last season? Uh, yeah, I think going into each game, we know that we're going to get um, our opponent's best game as well. So it's kind of just making sure to, to not uh, underestimate any opponent. You know, obviously, we, we went to Indiana to play some big names at the beginning of the season, but uh, we had some opponents that were local. and. Um, I think it was it was kind of a wake up call, seeing how hard we were going to get played, um, and, and I think we adapted to that later in the season. And that's why we were successful. Yeah, I, I agree with that again. Um, I think that in the first few games we felt that we had to try to defend our title as best as we could. And it might have been tough. We weren't going after games as much as we should have. We were kind of just sitting and waiting for the results at times. Um, so after those first few games, we just made that choice that. 
we just start the game off right, go after teams, like take every chance that we can to just get up and get that goal and keep going. Come over here to the right. This is Sports Moss, I'm coach. Uh, five straight postseason shutouts for you guys. For the defense, what do you feel is working particularly well and what do you credit to that success? Um, as a defender, I just feel like it's the three guys around me as well as the goalie. And um, actually also, I feel like the midfield and the forward. So when I say it's it's defensive shutouts, I would say it's a shutout um, through the whole team, you know. Um, we get put under a lot of pressure if the forwards aren't doing their job. and. The midfield does a nice job to kind of protect the back four, and then when we're called upon, I think we do our job. Um, I think it's something we take pride in, and when I go into a game, I think, uh, how can I get a shutout rather than, you know, can I get in the box or score? Um, that's the first thing on our mind. I don't need to add anything to that, though, for change. Go back to the back here. Coach uh, Jerry Woodley Jr., the College Sports Report. Coach, you were just mentioned the most important um, person on the field, the keeper. How much has that been a, sta uh, a mainstay of this, this squad this year to getting you all back to the uh, College Cup? The goalkeeper? Yes, sir. Um, well, on, on certain days, he has a really easy job because we've, we've worked so hard in front of him. And then on other days, though, he's just He's just been so consistent. Um, when we needed that save, when we've been broken, he's managed to come up with big saves all the way through the season, and he's he's continued to do that. I don't think he's a flashy player that lots of people gravitate to, but if you watch him play game after game after game, you're going to want him in your team because he just quietly goes about his business without any airs and graces, and uh, you know he's, he's managed to do a tremendous job again this year. So I think it's really about consistency for him, for sure. Standing back, Francisco. Uh, Francisco from the other time page. Uh, earlier, earlier you said maintaining standards and defending your title. Uh, with being the defending champion, how much does it mean for the program itself to be probably repeating uh, as a two-time champion for this tournament? Probably. You're pretty confident. You want to come up here? Um, no, but, you know, it, it's, the history's gone. Um, whatever's gone on last year is something we can be proud of, but all you can ever concentrate in life or sport is just what's up next. <coughs> and so this is a different group of people this year. Even the players who are returning, they're different young men than they were a year ago. And so for us, it's just all about getting the great opportunity to play and compete. And uh, where it finishes come Sunday afternoon, we'll see between the four great teams. But, you know, past history, it, it doesn't mean anything coming into the tournament now. It's just four great teams competing against each other. Um, obviously, people talk about stats and history, records, all that sort of stuff. But for us, it's just about trying to execute our jobs on the day and, and trying to make sure we, we have play the opponents. Additional questions, guys? Back over to the right again. Coach, what do you know about North Carolina and what they might bring uh, tomorrow night? We've got a couple of North Carolinian, Carolinians in the squad. I actually coached one of their players when I was in North Carolina. Um, now, Carlos does a fantastic job. Um, very regimented, very organized, very well coached, and they're a tremendous team. And, um, you know, they've got some, some exciting attacking players. And um, I'd like to say to you all that it'll be a gloves off, heavyweight, punch for punch, like the game we had against Virginia, where it's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But um, I think rather than looking at a heavyweight boxing match, you're probably going to be looking at a bit of a chess match, to be honest, because um, they do keep quite a few pe people behind the ball. They're not likely to get exposed that much. And so while it might not be as to and fro that maybe the spectator would like, I think you can really appreciate the nuances and the, the subtle different things that will be going on on the pitch. Come on, Chris, here. Coach, I was wondering if you could um, give us your thoughts on Marion. He's playing back in Houston, kind of have a little homecoming here. I know it's business, but that's got to be nice. Yeah, if, I mean, I just smiled when you mentioned his name. He's one of those guys that's always smiling and always happy, and it's, it's wonderful to have players like that around. 
and I think I can speak on behalf of the players. We've heard so much about Houston for the last couple of years. Whenever we're talking about places, it's always Houston this, Houston that from Bryce, and so um, it's kind of funny that he gets to, to chaperone us around coming back here, although he did promise us slightly warmer weather. So other than that, it's, it's awesome. And the, the crew here, the stadium is magnificent. The people are taking care of as well. And so it, it's fun to be here, and we're, we're really honored to be part of it. And obviously for Bryce, I'm sure he'll have a few extra fans in the crowd that'll make him super proud being, being back as well. Okay, we'll go ahead and wrap Can I just say one thing as well? Please. You mentioned about Jordan moving on and um, doing so well. You know, college soccer gets bashed at different times, but you only have to look at all of the great college student athletes that are graduating through and going into the MLS. The MLS is signing world class players from all over the place, and yet you look at the league, there's a ton of incredible student athletes that are absolutely crushing it in the league. And it's something that as you write about the sport and you critique everything, it'd be really nice for you guys to realize just what a tremendous standard college soccer is. We've got four great teams here. There's a ton of other teams that could easily be here. The reason why people like Jordan and Brandon are doing well is because they're truly remarkable people, but they've grown up in a tremendous soccer playing environment in college soccer, and it's preparing great players for the next level, be that MLS or national teams. Uh, maybe people don't have to look at the rest of the world to talk about taking people out of school at the age of seven and having them just play soccer because these guys became the great players they were, going to class and training at the same time. And it, it seems to work pretty well. So I'm just for the record with that, thanks. Thank you. Any additional questions? You guys? I'm going to wrap it up on that. Coach, gentlemen, thank you again for your time. Congratulations on a great season so far, and uh, good luck tomorrow night. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.